Uh, folks, before we jump into my presentation, I'm going to be your first presenter here tonight. Um, I want to tell you why I'm talking about wigs. Um, about 10 years ago, I was hired to DJ a wig out party. I'd never DJed a wig out party. And it was for a very high-end um, interior designer based out of San Francisco. And so when I arrived to the party, I've got all my gear, and I enter this mansion. I walk into this corridor, and it was lined with all these beautiful mannequins and wig stands with the most elaborate, over-the-top wigs that I had ever seen before. I didn't even know wigs could be made with this type of quality. And so I very quickly slipped off my $10 Uma Thurman Bob, you know, from Pulp Fiction that I got at Target for about 10 bucks. Very quickly took that off and grabbed this beautiful aquamarine, you know, mermaid wig and put that on like I brought it myself. And I uh, DJed this party and it was incredible because everyone was just wearing their regular clothes, but they wore different wigs throughout the night and they swapped out these different elaborate wigs. Marie Antoinette and the Bride of Frankenstein and mullets and afros, you name it. F phenomenal wigs. And to this day, it's, it's maybe the most memorable party that I've ever DJed. And at the end of the night, the host of this party, this very well-to-do, very wealthy man, started to collect all the wigs and started to throw them away. And I just said, what the heck are you doing? And he's like, well, we have to have new wigs for next year's party. We couldn't possibly use the same wigs. And I said, um, can I have those? I mean, I, I was just so enamored with everybody all night. And so that, 10 years ago, started my own personal wig collection. So, with that being said, why is hair so important? Do you think it's about time that we jump into the $6.5 billion global industry of wigs? Should we? Do you want to know? All right, hit it, Steve. Ancient Egypt has the earliest recorded usage of wigs, dating back to 3400 BC. Wig makers used vegetable fibers, wool, animal, and human hair, and it took weeks to make just one, which made them very expensive and adorned by the elite for special occasions. But wigs also served a very practical purpose, shielding shaved heads from the blistering sun and offering protection from head lice. King Louis in 1610 took power, excuse me, King Louis XIII took power at age nine in 1610 after the assassination of his father, Henry IV. By age 17, King Louis was already thinning, already had thinning hair. He hired 40 wig makers to keep him looking young, and he was revered in Europe for sculpting men's fashion. Now, our founding fathers wore wigs known as perukes to cover up their hair loss from syphilis and other diseases that caused scores, scabs, and scars. Now, many people shaved their heads because of lice, and they used lavender and white powdered wigs to have the perfect solution to cover up the smell and the discomfort. Now, the term big wig was coined for a showy, wealthy person. The size of your wig was associated with your status and your income, but it wasn't until the 1950s and 60s that wigs got their major boom in the U.S. when a new form of machine-produced wigs made them cheaper and more accessible. Washable, synthetic wigs became all the rage, capturing the perfectly coiffed hairstyle for performers like the Supremes. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the queen of wigs herself, Dolly Parton. Now... Dolly has owned hundreds, if not thousands, of wigs throughout the years. We've never seen Dolly's real hair. Dolly claims that it helps with prep time, and they help her achieve the look that she wants. Dolly also admits to wearing her mic pack on the very top of her wig pack so it makes her hair bigger. And to quote Dolly, the higher the hair, the closer to God. And my other favorite Dolly quote, when asked if it hurts that people perceive her as a dumb blonde, she says, well, for one, I know I'm not dumb, and two, I know I'm not blonde. <laughs> God bless Dolly Parton. Dolly is the character most impersonated by drag queens. Professional queen, wig, and hairstylist Vochka says that wigs and hairstyling can absolutely be transformational in forming your own identity on stage. And of course, there's a lot of power in that hair. Moving on to religious matters, Orthodox Jewish women do not show their hair in public after their wedding. They cover up with a headscarf or a wig referred to in Yiddish as a shadle. It's a signal to their surroundings that they're married and they comply with traditional notions with the outer self being covered in a modest and dignified way to allow their inner self to shine through. There's somebody's cell phone. 
Now, we have two basic types of wigs. You have a synthetic or a human hair wig. You can also use animal fur or hair, but you have a basic cap or a capless wig. You can have a full lace front or a, la a Swiss lace wig, a monofilament or a polyurethane wig. Then that goes on to hair pieces, toupees, extensions. But the best wig of all, the Remy human hair wig, by far the most expensive in the business. Wig making has been around for hundreds of years. Top end, top end wig makers can bring in about $100,000 a year. To properly wear a wig, you get a good fitting cap, which I am wearing underneath this, and you get a well-fitting wig. You cut your lace front along your hairline and you blend it with your skin tone. And of course, you properly store it for good maintenance. You can ask my husband, they're all over my house. Now, dealing with alopecia or a cancer diagnosis is difficult enough. For some, losing your hair can also affect your self-esteem self and your identity. Places like the Cancer Support Community on South 11th here in Bozeman offers all sorts of free services, including a free wig room where patients can get fitted for free. Here I'd like to introduce you to eight-year-old Christian McPhillamy. He was inspired by St. Jude's Children Research Hospital. He grew out his hair for two and a half years so he could donate 10 inches to the Locks of Love. He endured relentless bullying at school, but for one special purpose, to make a kid, uh, uh, to make a wig for a child being treated with cancer. Now, Sean Connery started losing his hair at an early age. He wore a hairpiece in every single James Bond movie. Don Kaczynski needed to cut his hair for another role, so he wore a wig in season three of The Office. To avoid chemical processing from heat and flat irons, rapper Cardi B is known for her wig collection. Now, my favorite actress, Catherine O'Hara, developed her character of Moira Rose on Schitt's Creek after attending a dinner party where the host kept leaving throughout the evening to change her wig. Moira was known on the show for naming her wigs, and here is Maureen, who does not like to be manhandled. Now, my friend Katie not only names her wigs, but she takes it to the next level, finessing the persona of that wig into a full-blown character with costumes, accents, and personality traits, of course. My personal favorite right here in the corner, Pan Am Tam, or as we call her, Tammy for short. Now, people use wigs in their everyday careers. Meet my longtime friend, Jessie Kerr, known as the Princess Party Pal. She's an esthetician here in town, but she will also come to your event or your child's birthday party as one of the many Disney princesses. Now, as we know, children are smart, and they see every single detail. So her wig game and her look has to be 110% spot on, wouldn't you say? Now, speaking of events, here we are at Big Sky Youth Empowerment's annual bingo night. It was a Yacht Rock theme, so of course we had to come as the cast of Love Boat. My husband being a good sport, as Julie McCoy. My dearest friend Whitney Caldwell as the captain there in the middle. And me as a very awkward doc with a little bit uh, too long of hair. But, you know, we pulled it off. Now what would Halloween be without a good wig? Here is supermodel Heidi Klum, both pictures. She's known for her extravagant costumes and her over-the-top parties. Whether she shows up as a worm, a robot, an old lady, or Princess Fiona from Shrek. Now, speaking of Halloween, here is my own personal favorite costume, dressing up as my co-anchor Chet in 2019. I mean. Good morning to you, 6.30 here on your Halloween morning. I'm Chet Lehman with Chet Lehman, and Matt Elmo will have our Halloween forecast here in just a moment. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> our top story for you now. Oh, he had no idea I was gonna do that, it was great. Uh, now, whether you are trying to cover up baldness or scabs, try to get rid of head lice, whether you are showing off your class or your status, maybe you're dressing up for fun for a party or an event, maybe you're appearing in a drag show, maybe you're covering up to honor your religion, or you're wearing a wig out of sense of normalcy, whatever the case may be, hair's to you. Thank <laughs> you.